In this video, we're going to go over an exam question that involves scale drawing and also some equations of motion. Pause the video now and try all parts of the question. Part I says use the figure 3.1 to determine the magnitude of the average velocity of the aircraft as it travels from A to B. So we need to remember that average velocity is equal to total displacement over total time. I mean, it's really a little bit uh, silly to say total displacement because it's displacement obviously, you know, takes into, a fat, uh, into account that it's a vector. So it's really just the displacement. Now, there's a big clue here as a ruler. What is the displacement from A to B? It's eight centimeters. If you've got just, just above or just more, uh, that's fine. Obviously, it'd be far easier on paper because you can measure it. So it's going to be eight centimeters times by our scale factor, which is 50 kilometers per centimeter, divided by the total time, which is 25 minutes. But we always want things in seconds. So uh, plug in the numbers and we end up with our average velocity of 270 meters per second. Now, can you spot silly mistake that I have made? I've written kilograms. Uh, obviously, that's nonsense. It should have been kilometers. And of course, we don't want kilometers. We want meters. So if you typed this in as 50, you wouldn't have uh, got 270. You'd have got something that's a thousand times more. So when you're typing this in, uh, we obviously need to uh, times this by a thousand to get it into meters. Part II, without doing any calculations, explain why the average speed of the aircraft is not the same as the magnitude of its average velocity. Uh, so this is because the distance traveled is not the same as the displacement. So this is where you've got to be really clear on your definitions. So average speed is the total distance over the total time. And average velocity is a displacement over the total time. So you can see that I, I got these mixed up a little bit when I wrote total displacement and then I crossed it out. All right. But there's a difference because the total distance would, would be this route here. And the displacement is the shortest distance from A to B. So we jump a, lot, a bit now to uh, randomly to some planets. Um, but it says calculate the speed of Io in its orbit. So it's an orbit, which means it's obviously going round. So approximating this as a circuit, as a circle, sorry. Uh, so speed is distance over time. So what is the distance? It's going to be 2 times the diameter, or 2 pi r, and the time is, oh, well, we've been given 1.5 times 10 to the 5 seconds. It'd be very nice here, not given it in years or days. So this is very much a case of plugging the numbers, and you get 1.8 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. The, the thing they're testing here is that you, of course, recognize speed distance over time, and it's a circle. Part I, I calculate the constant acceleration of free fall on the surface of Io. So what information do we have from the question? We've got a velocity of 1.3 kilometers per second. I'm going to straight away change that to 1,300 meters per second. So I don't make the mistake I made over here. We've got a distance that they're traveling of 470 kilometers which again is 4,700 meters. We've got an acceleration, which is obviously going to be our negative acceleration because the, if you think about the volcano, the jets are traveling up, so the acceleration is slowing them down. 
And that's what we're trying to work out. And then the final velocity, so I should probably change this to initial velocity. The final velocity is zero when the water reaches the top just before it turns around and comes back down again to the bottom. So uh, what equation links these together? V squared minus U squared is 2AS. So plug in all the numbers uh, and rearrange for acceleration and you get 1.8 meters per second squared, considerably less than on Earth. 